uh, concentrating deeply on getting some work done and I uh, lost track of time. I didn't realize it was uh, already time to stream, but here I am. Uh, gonna be working on some design docs today, doing some quilt pattern 2D stuff, and then um, wanna switch over to uh, some 3D design docs, see if I can get uh, <clears throat> See if I can get the free CAD workflow kind of nicely moving along and uh, just see where the day takes me. That's my plan for the day, keeping it nice and simple. Uh, let me get the chat window open and get the ball rolling. Perfect, I think. <laughs> as perfect as things can be these days, that's what's happening. Okay. So. Ooh. I did an arm workout yesterday, so I'm feeling it. <laughs> today. Uh, anyone who is tuning in on YouTube or on the VODs on Twitch, watching this not live, uh, I try to say this at the front of things a little bit and I try not to bring it up too much, but uh, please you can support this channel by continuing to watch, uh, sharing the channel around to people who might be interested, subscribing, if you're on YouTube or following if you're on Twitch uh, and interacting in the chat in comments giving likes all of that kind of stuff and if you are so inclined and you want to see uh, development of my CAD and my design work uh, continue uh, you can support me financially through the donation uh, link on my stream about page or on my patreon page Things are early stages, uh, so there's a lot of growth and um, iteration that needs to happen. If you're keen on being uh, one of the people who helps shape things near the start of this, uh, consider helping me out in that way. Uh, uh, if that appeals to you, kind of this early adopter sort of thing, go for that. That's, uh, that's about it. So I'm going to get right to work. I've been... Um, working on uh, getting this quilt, this 2D pattern underway again, uh, shifting things over to uh, the latest set of library functionality in a way that I think is um, a little more user-friendly than uh, the way I built this one. Time will tell, of course. I mean, things uh, things have a tendency to change around, but um, that's just going to be okay. So um, the only thing I'm going to do on this yet before I switch over to working on some 3D or on some slightly different stuff is uh, finishing up the placement of these arrows here because that is, um, well, they're a little off uh, is, is really what the deal is there. So that's the first thing to do. Um, so there's um, two minor problems with it. Um, actually, so there's a color related problem, which I can, I think I can fix. If I uh, do this here, um, let's go. This figure two code is what I'm looking at to draw this out. As is usually the case, things are a little bit repetitive in the diagramming stage because um, it's a lot of, you know, a lot of 
steps need to be written down and shown so you need to repeat a lot of diagrams with some with only subtle changes applied in every step so things are quite repetitive uh, but that ends up being more uh, readable more more usable as a as a final document um, what is nice is if you're smart about what you define you can kind of build later functions that draw shapes from earlier functions so in a perfect world you kinda what I want to get to with these um, quilt things in particular is you kind of give a single map of shapes in their final finished stage and you can automatically get some some prior steps sort of generated for you already. Um, I don't know that I'll ever get that perfect because it's not fully intuitive what steps are um, like it, it's you can't necessarily programmatically determine what steps are necessary to produce the output um, or you can't necessarily do it simply but that's a whole other that's a whole big thing and I'm not gonna worry about it right now uh, I'm basically I'm just here trying to recreate that with this particular shape here so what I want to do is if I save this these will be rendered incorrectly without this um, fill white stroke right so there's some minor issues and uh, I, in the bits section here I have a um, arrow function somewhere where'd it go arrow it's right up here first one <laughs> Um, the First of all, I think I can do this. To fix one side of that. The other thing, it's a little, if I do this, get rid of that, and then get rid of that oops what did I do now what I messed something up here oh this up there there we go okay that um, <laughs> that looks nice the pro or a problem with that now is here the arrow defaults are uh, invisible without a style applied to them. I don't, I don't necessarily love that. If I do style
and then some element. Can't remember how this works. Ah, uh, it does pop the style into the first level of this. So if I do style green, does it override? Oh, wait a second. I stroke green is the Yeah, okay, so actually, now that I think about this, it might not be a problem. If I just do this, SVG, oops, if I do this here, wrap the thing here, SVG slash style element, um, stroke black, fill black so those are defaults oh I do have to do this okay that nicely colors that the way I want it and it lets me style those okay there we go solve that problem which is really nice it was a quick fix What I would like to do is actually make this not quite that color. Let's inspect this stroke color here is actually what I want. Let's go ahead and make it that. Ooh, actually, I'm not sure that I like that. You know what, black's gonna be fine. That's a little more readable, I think. It'll be pretty good. Those can stay white, these can stay white. Okay, so that particular issue is solved very nicely. Um, right, then, I just need to get these in the correct position. So what's the right approach here? Hmm. Well, let me have a quick peek at this. So instead of uh, zero, zero, let's do negative half and half to center it. And translate zero, zero for a second. Okay, so that is more or less centered on that object, which is nice. Mm. What I actually need to do, well actually, hmm. I have to think about this a little bit. The translate I have to do actually moves a little bit. I 
actually want it to be let me think about this okay M here is the midpoint yeah and then I actually want something kind of like this where I do um, rotate point if I rotate one one by 45 degrees Yeah, okay, that's the function I want. So I want to rotate this point, this midpoint, uh, by 22 and a half degrees. So I just want to do SVG rotate point um, 22.5. That should be the new M for that. Let's see if that's the right spot. Huh. A little surprised that that didn't work the way I thought it would. Hmm, okay. If I don't translate them at all, where do they end up? Oh, something's going wrong. All right, what did I break? Let's see here. Nth not supported on this type of function. I don't know what I did. Okay, so this is not working the way I thought. Here, here's why. I have to do this. To get the argument in the correct position, that maybe works. Hey, there we go, that's what I need. Now the only problem <laughs> is uh, the uh, overlap of the points here. I wonder if I uh, pivot it backwards. No, that doesn't actually help. I mean, it's almost, hmm. Shoot, I want, um, It's not quite right, actually. But before I worry about that, I need to worry about the the indexed the indexing problem here. Um, I wonder if I can um, I wonder if this works. I guess not.
Huh. Well, that didn't do what I thought it would anyway. Yeah, it looks like I can't really mess with the Z index in SVG. The reason it's overlapped is because the paint order is such that it, it's being painted, as it were, onto this shape, but then this shape is being painted over it, so you, it overlaps. Um, that's a pain. Hmm. Well, that's not, it's not the answer to my problem. Uh, so I can just get rid of that. It was an attempt, didn't work. Right, so I have to, I have to get a little more clever. The thing I don't like about that is, um, I might have to, Maybe I could do something a little easier. Let's go like this. Go ahead and copy the for loop. Paste a for loop here. And now, for this for loop here, all I need is X shape. I don't need the arrow part of this at all. Uh, in fact, I don't even need this. I do believe I could just leave that like that. And then this one, let's just start with that. Oh, messed something up. Hmm. All right, let's have a look. I think I might have been a little bit wrong with this. Well, there we go. That mostly solves the problem. It's pretty ugly though. That's the it's the thing I don't love about it. And it it recalculates all of this stuff every time, which I don't love. So, let's simplify this part of it. <clears throat> What I can do is instead actually um, all I have is let me think about this. I just have an arrow, an angle, A, which comes from here. So I don't need shape. Actually here, I can actually make this 
quite a bit simpler, just like this. And this can just be sum 0 and 2. Cool. OK, so obviously there's an issue as to the placement, but I can work on that. The reason it's off weirdly like that is because this group Oh, I could do this instead. If I translate this group Okay. should be able to just concat two for loops together, I think. I think that makes sense. We'll find out soon enough. Okay, let me just make sure that this is working the way I want it to. Oh, did I delete? I might have deleted uh, <laughs> the output of this for loop here. I think I did. The output of this for loop is the arrow stuff, which I'll clean up again in a minute. Concat, group, translate the whole thing. Okay, is this gonna work? Kinda, not really, but uh, that's okay. So, Just make sure that this is still working. Yeah, good. Beautiful. Okay. Just gotta sort this particular thing out. Oops. Let's start by just having simple Okay, so it's at zero, zero, that's nice. This midpoint. That's the thing. Ah, maybe let's start with, got to rotate it by A and see if that I won't see any difference because I haven't translated it. So let's try this. There we go. Okay. Now we're cooking. Perfect. So there we go. We translate the arrow and then we do svg slash rotate uh, that shape by 22 and a half plus a. Not quite. Rotate it first. We're almost there.
a little weird. Oh, I meant 180, not 360. Something doesn't make sense in my brain. But, okay, let's get rid of that for just a moment. I just need the arrows to be in the right position, which is actually here. A plus 22 and a half should rotate it Okay, so now they're on the line. This is the kind of the radius away that they are. That's good. Okay, all I need now is this part to work. Okay. <laughs> um, Hmm, okay, we're on the right track here. Um, things are a little bit off though. Like if you look at, I don't, I don't know why that would be. But it's close enough to not really worry about it, to be honest. I guess that's okay. So let's combine these here so they don't have too much mess. Oops. Um, why am I not doing this properly? Something's not right in my brain here. I'll leave it for now. Well, okay, that's just gonna be fine. It'll have to be okay. I'm not too concerned about it. It looks fine, uh, especially at 100% zoom, that looks perfectly normal. Last thing to do is add this label, press seams in same direction, which I do need to do. Let's put a few uh, notes in here for myself. Oh yeah. Um, A and B shapes. Uh, arrows. And um, last thing is the label. 
which is somewhere in the drawing here, SVG translate label with a font size one and the text. Okay, let's see if that'll render. I think it will. It got missed. Um, together for a second. Okay, that's not it. Uh, what did I do wrong here? Oh, wait, maybe... No. Oh, okay. The text was just in a bit of a spot there. Let's not translate it nearly as far then. Let's just do this. There we go. Okay, now it's on the screen. <laughs> Uh, let's just move it into a spot that makes sense. Okay. Okay, so this just needs to be translated. Two negative seven. Uh, let's do negative five first. Kind of wanted to show up about here. Let's get rid of this. Two and a half. Negative six. Close. Okay, that looks pretty good to me. Let me just have a quick peek here. All right, the next thing is step two, which is good and fine with me. So that I'm going to call the end of this, oop, this particular project for the time being. It's looking pretty good, if I do say so myself. and reusability is much higher than even the last time which is really nice um, a lot of these functions are being wrapped up into reusable components and this entire document structure is is a I think a better uh, a better approach for reusability as well so I'm happy with the pipeline changes that I'm making and the progress on that so that's really good uh, the next thing I want to do I do believe is a little more experimental I've got For the next 2D pattern I have to do, I have these paper cutout shapes and I need to be able to uh, get these as SVG shapes. And I've been working on, on stream even, um, a few different components 
to this potential to, to this thing. So let me close off a few things here. Um, yes. I'll leave that open, close this. Close that, close that. You know, I'll leave that open, leave that open. This I want to keep open because I might go to that in a few minutes. Uh, what other things do I have open here? Oh, nice. Okay. Right. So the library to test or to work with is the pencil library, which I'm working on. Um, let me, uh, Get this started. See if it works. Should work. Should work. No problem. Let's go like this. Let's see what's all working here. Been about a week since I've popped this one open, so. Let's load the file source uh, pencil main. I think it's a main. Find out soon enough. Not sure what's taking so long here. Maybe it might be caught in some kind of loop or something. We'll find out soon. <laughs> we'll see what's going on in a minute. Um, okay. Ah, uh, yes. So the last successful thing I've done, I do have. A, an algorithm that indeed takes a sketch from my iPad um, and correctly identifies endpoints and corner points for relatively simple um, open shapes. So long way to go, obviously, but uh, step in the right direction to say the least. Let's just open up the SVG version of it. Remove test.html. Not sure why that didn't work. There might be something uh, broken. Oh, I think probably I was messing around with where to go. I think I was messing around with some art ideas, and uh, that was really slowing things down. If I uh, get rid of this, save that, and try to load it again, I wonder if it'll load no problem. I'll have to see. Yeah, okay. So, I'm gonna get my iPad, I'll be right back.
Okay, so let me just make sure this is still all connecting in the way I want it to. I need, uh, need to see if the sketch thing is working okay. Mm -hmm. Let's have a little peek at this. Okay. Let's see if this quick draw thing will work again. See what that looks like. Yes, okay. So we got stuff kind of working the way I want, at least for those sorts of shapes. Now, uh, what I want to do is have a bit of proof of concept ready for getting uh, traces of 2D shapes in the real world to uh, work with this. So, what I'm going to do is just take a picture of this, mess with the contrast a bit, and see if I can get something to work. That's the first thought I have, and it might work fine, but we'll have to see. Oh, boy, oh boy. feel really cheesy. I'm just using my iPad's camera to do this because I don't want to move my phone at the moment. Feels weird though, I'll tell you that much. Okay, photos, just got to edit this real quick. It's ugly. It's real ugly. It might be fine though. Let's see. Uh, da -da -da, da -da -da. I wish I could show this on the screen, but I haven't got that set up. And it's only going to take a little bit. Shouldn't take too long at all, really. Uh, now I just need to adjust the exposure and that kind of stuff. It doesn't have to be particularly clean for what I'm trying to do. I think, anyway. Crank the highlights, really lower the shadows, that kind of thing. Really up the contrast and the brightness. I think this could actually work. Okay, I'm 
It's promising. No vignette, that doesn't make sense. Okay. So I've got, I can, so I took a picture of the squirrel thing and it's as close to a black and white thing as I can get. And the whole idea is to pass that through the trace and to see if I can extract a, uh, uh, an SVG path from that and then uh, use that in the rest of the workflow. That's the whole idea. We'll see what, uh, see what comes of it. Final thing to do, I do wonder, can I just invert this? Almost there, almost ready. Hide that. Insert. Okay, I'm nearly there, I promise. <laughs> I think I think I can come up with a way to invert this. Suppose I was wrong, and uh, that's okay. Let's not worry about that. Right, let me try this now. Oops. Almost there, I promise. <laughs> okay, share PNG. Remote. Okay, so now I want to run this, but instead of doing all this weirdness, all I want is um, to render the points, I believe. Uh, let's just, I'm lazy, let's just see what this looks like. It's taking a lot longer, presumably because there's way more points to evaluate. Okay, so uh, this glitch aside, this is pretty promising as a method. Uh, it even chunks out some of the points and it has all the corner points of that pretty nicely. That's pretty cool. Okay, instead of running this though, oops, let's do uh, split and actually let's not tangle that.
Okay. I had a solution to this problem and I've forgotten what it is, so I have to try sort that one out. And then I also have to try filter away the outer part of this shape because I only want the path that is the squirrel. So uh, let's sort that out. Because once I have that going, I can kind of just use that uh, fairly easily for the rest of these. I think that will work fine. The hardest one will be, um, there's this bigger one that is a whole uh, tree. And I have to flatten it out and try to get it on a good background. But I do think if I can get it to work with the smaller ones, I do think this will actually work. It's just a matter of getting a good angle on the camera. Uh, but that shouldn't be a big deal, I think. In fact, I'm kind of excited to try. But first, I'll put this down. Right, so let's uh, start filtering out this bit of the list and get things going. Um, I will actually copy a few useful things here. Let's go... Uh, Okay, points, sketch. X points is performing some translation stuff, I think. Bounding box is the bounding box, which I don't really need. The object is all that. And then this. And here, I don't need this, nor do I need, oh no, I do need that. But I don't need this one. And I don't have eye points, so it's just this very simple. All right, let's see if that'll work. Nope. No MX in this context. Ah, right. Righto, righto. See if this will work. Hey, there we go. Okay, so I've got a little more basic an approach here. I just need to get the different paths separated appropriately. How did I do that? 
Um, there was for sure a way, because I've done this in other projects. Uh, actually, let's go find that. I do hope um, if there's anyone watching now or on a VOD later um, and you're on a holiday or doing Thanksgiving or anything along those lines, I hope you're having a good time. I hope you're staying safe. Um, hope you're making wise decisions, all that stuff, you know. I just hope everyone's doing okay. It's not a holiday here in Canada, so <laughs> hence me still streaming a bit, you know, but it's all good. Okay. This I don't remember what I did. It's this is completely related to uh, not merging paths uh, correctly and I need to fix it I can fix it I just need to so um, I have to remember how I did it that's all Come to me soon. The mug component the URL turns into an SVG, SVG into mug points. This might be okay. SVG turns you you pull the paths, and you turn every path into points. <laughs> okay, this I believe is um, the section that I really do need to focus in on. Let's have a look. Well, that looks exactly the same. Probably because it is. Okay. Big deal, not a big deal. Okay, maybe this is where I need to pay attention. Uh, I'm losing my my focus on this a little bit, unfortunately. Okay, here. This, I think, is what I'm supposed to be uh, having a look at. Okay, let's try this instead.
Okay, have a peek at this. So I have basically, here is a list of points from a sketch, is that correct? Let's try this, sketch. Is it a list of points or a list of list of points? I can't remember. Okay, here. Map cat split paths is where, ah, okay. I'm doing something here that isn't quite right yet. Okay. SVG to paths, map V to points. Okay. Okay, there we go. So it's, there we go. Now I've got separate paths. That's actually what I want. Um, okay, so using that, what I need to do here now is, um, Okay, so path points is now what I'm looking at here. So path points, let's, uh, points to polygon right does that make sense that should leave me with an an SVG element directly so I should be able to do this object now just equals path points to polygon of path points. Let's see if that actually makes sense. And we'll run it. Oh. Uh, SVG slash path polygon is what I'm looking for there. All right, let's see if it works. Yeah, okay, no more glitch. Perfect. It's exactly what I'm looking for. Um, it's a bit of a messy edge, but that's something I could kind of work on later. I'm not going to worry too much about it. Um, 
because there might be something kind of neat I can do with that. Uh, does the function every other exist in this context? Every other point? Yeah, so that may be good. But first, let me um, Take um, if I look at the filter here, bounding box area. Yeah. So what I can do here is actually get the yeah, yeah 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 so then I can make a function here remove largest path um, and path points so what I want to do here is um, uh, take rest from sort by bounding box area, the list of path points. That should work. I think that'll work. We'll find out soon enough. Um, so here, I'm actually gonna rewrite this a little bit to be a thread macro here. Um, you know what, actually, I can even get rid of this. Sketch to through uh, remove largest path. And then the, the remaining path points just get put into path points to polygon, path poofs points to polygon uh, and that should be it Let's see if that works almost um, oh of course I, I removed the smallest not the, the largest To reverse the list in order for that to work. Yeah. Okay. Uh, that's pretty sweet, if I do say so myself. Now, here I want to do map v every other point. I think that'll work. Man, that's pretty. That's pretty cool. I gotta say, I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, right. So, let me uh, getting um, shapes from pictures. I think that's a fair starting point, right? I think that's okay. The uh, next set of things to do is, uh, so I've got the shape of it here, but I would need to rescale it to be um, in the context of the design drawings. I use the 
like I scale the images down, but I use the real inch measurements of it. So I would need something like this. I do need to have a scaled measure here that I can put in to rescale the points to be real, to be accurate to their true size. But I think I can do that. So I actually am curious if I just run this, say, just a bunch of times every other point. If I keep running every other point, it should reduce the number of points. <laughs> it reduced them significantly. <laughs> That's uh, pretty cool. It's like weird cubism or something. <laughs> I love it. That's hilarious. So it's not smooth. That's the only it's the only problem I really have with it at the moment. And that is because it's all it is just approximated with straight line segments, so it's understandable that that would be the case. But if you take you know this piece of paper and you look at this shape on my screen like that's pretty good. That is pretty good. I'm gonna just do this once, by the way. Save this. Uh, you know what, maybe twice is not a bad idea. Anyway, doesn't matter. I, I, gotta, I, I gotta say I'm proud of that. Boom. So there's probably adjustments I could make that would maybe smooth out the shape even further. Just holding it up. Yeah, it's, the zoom's a little off here. Uh, what am I doing? Ah, yeah. Okay, here. I'm going to rescale this. Um, I'm trying to uh, get the scale on my monitor the same if I hold the paper up. To, I want to see how close it actually does get. Because uh, that's kind of cool to see if it would see how close it is, um, shape wise. Oh, close. Let's go. Uh, I'm getting real finicky with it here. Okay. That's pretty. Pretty darn close, if I do say so myself. Uh, sweet. I'm going to turn on a light and then I'm going to attempt to do the same thing with this. Um, I am just going to output it also to squirrel uh, first path. Uh, no, you know what? I'll just do that squirrel.svg and you know what I'll actually leave it like this uh, maybe a bit aggressive <laughs> Now, now I want to do it with
Wait a minute, why don't I just do this? Squirrel. And then just do that same thing with uh, the rabbit. And I'll be right back. Get that light on and whatnot. All right, so I've got the rabbit I'm working on here, and I'll uh, get that up on there next. The hardest thing is I'm never totally sure about the distortion of the image, you know, if I'm just holding my camera askew a little bit, then you get some keystone uh, distortion on the final result. Not that it would really matter, I don't think, but uh, I mean, for something like this, I did check the exact uh, shape doesn't matter too much. Um, but it's nice to be as accurate as possible, right? So, uh, just gonna get this done quickly. Gotta make all these crazy adjustments now. Crank that.
Okay, almost done. Almost sending it up there. Let's go. So I'm doing some of these like uh, image adjustments manually, but it would be really cool to have um, the automatic approach in here too. So you just take a picture, say with your iPhone or something, your, your phone camera, it doesn't have to be an iPhone of course, you just send it to the computer or if it's a pattern that I'm taking in from a customer just have it in the customer data folder and you can just have the original completely unchanged you just run it through a pipeline of image transformations get the SVG out and then you leave the original completely unmodified uh, that could work too it'd be basically what I'm saying is the stuff I'm doing manually now is really quite easy like I, I'm literally just cranking uh, contrast cranking exposure black points really low, white points really high, all that stuff to get it as close to black and white as possible. And all of those are easy to do automatically. Uh, theoretically easy to do automatically. I just have to actually do it. I haven't done it yet, so. Um, let me just get this bit done. Insert a photo. There's one thing I think I might want to manually touch up here. That's the other kind of interesting thing. You know, I don't necessarily want to do everything manually, but if necessary, there are, like I could do manual touch ups on shapes. Oops. like a rabbit to me I'm just on this particular one I took a picture and you could see some of the pencil lines so I'm just getting rid of those pencil lines in case it leaves a bit of jaggedness where I don't want jaggedness you know that's all that's happening here Okay. Um, share PNG. All right, moment of truth. Can I make this appear up there? I think so. Let me just clean up. My work environment. <laughs> All right, here we go. Can I make it happen? I bet. I bet I can. Let's uh, make those real. And now I just have to run rabbit and check file rabbit. Oh yeah, it's almost perfect. There's a glitch here. 
but that's okay. I actually wonder. Uh, defin remove smallest path path points can run this exact same thing without the reverse. Build that the rabbit here. If I want that to work, I actually can just do. I can filter out remove smallest path as well run that and that should remove that little dot there yeah awesome there it is it actually worked and here it's it's actually an SVG path like like I can change it completely I think that's fantastic. I'm super, super jazzed about that. Um, okay, so that is a good enough proof of concept for this. I do wonder if I can get started on the next thing I wanted to do. Um, well, let's see, what's a good idea here? I think I will get started on a new design project. So, um, what's the smart thing to do here? What's the smart move? thought I wanted to try first actually um, I'm very curious about this if I do um, This is just a, an experiment. I don't want to run for a moment. Okay, so this path points here is um, object. This one can just be. I don't need to wrap that in that at all. That's just a one liner. Okay, that should still work, but object two, I want to treat a little differently. I want to try f slash offset. Points and then offset. So the points here, I do want to do um, map. Can you map cat? Oh, wait a minute, I want to just do, I could do this. Apply concat to path points. That's the path thing. In this case, I know it's just going to be a straightforward path anyway, so I don't have to worry about that because I've already filtered out the other things. So what I want to do there, I want to try offsetting it by some amount. I want to draw that, see if it actually offsets correctly. So let's find out. So, stroke, none, fill, blue, stroke, uh, black, fill, none, object two. Let's see if that'll work. Uh, 
Oh, of course. This. This one I need to, let me write this out a little better. This one I do want to thread last. I want to run path points through the function. Ugh, no, I'll just do it like this. I don't care that much right now. Path points to polygon. This has to be wrapped in a list. Okay, that should work now. Let's see. That's weird. That's not correct. Uh, okay, well, let's have a quick peek at this now. Stroke fill none, stroke black, stroke width, two pixels. Let's try that. Hmm. It's not showing up. That's strange to me. Um, it looks like the right sets of points and everything. Hmm. shape. <laughs> um, not sure what's going on with that, to be honest. if my offset algorithm um, doesn't work on concave shapes that is entirely possible hmm Well, I guess this isn't really what I'm trying to figure out anyway, so I can kind of move on for now. Uh, let me try this though. I'm just going to fiddle around with it just a little bit. What if I offset it by like a bigger number? Set it by zero. Does that break? I wonder. It might. Something's going on here. If I don't do the offset, if I just do this,
this, if I'm thinking about it right, should just be the rabbit shape. It is. Huh. So that offset, that offset function just doesn't work on the whole thing, and I'm not sure why that is. That's all. Um. Well, okay, not a big deal. Let's try one more time, uh, f slash offset. See what that ends up looking like. Yeah, okay, it's not really working. Okay, good to know, good to know. Let's just clean this part up. Oops, object two does not exist. There it is, build it, run it, save it, perfect. Okay, now I can move on to starting to create the next bit of design work I wanna do. Uh, I don't have a ton of time to work on this yet, maybe about half an hour to 45 minutes. So I basically can just get the document started and the workflow prepped because then I can work on it tomorrow probably. So that's, I think that's good. It's a good goal for the rest of the day. So let me close out this. I don't need it right now. These I want to keep open, but I don't need them at the moment, which is fine. Okay, so kill that. Kill that. Oh, excuse me. Let me make a new project. First by opening design dumbbells and using that as a template. Uh, Desk, a new desk design. It's about time that I finally tackled this one. It's been a while since I've built a desk and this desk is actually uh, uh, on its last legs. The What I wanna do is keep the tabletop of this desk and basically build new legs and a new um, shelf thing under it where I could slide uh, computers, I could mount new um, monitor stands, new um, mic stands, that sort of thing, kind of clamp it all under there, uh, hide my cables, all in a nice compact way, and that doesn't get in the way of my legs, and is probably a little taller so that I could stand at it or something like that, but I'm not going to get too complicated with it, at least not initially. Okay, so depths.eden. The build config works there. The main, um, I'm going to make. Uh, Desk.design, pretty simple, nothing crazy there. Dev, prod, that all seems to make sense in the depths. The build config seems good. 
the embed code. Nothing really changes there except this. Got to work on that approach to design desk, parametric design document for building um, a desk. Read me. That seems straightforward enough. Let's copy resources and namespace and get things rolling. Index, we don't need to call it ASDFF, that's pretty silly. Um, what did I, what did I call it in the embed code here? Desk parametric design. CSS. Fine. All seems good, right? It's uh, design CLJS, yeah. Okay, let's save this, create the directory structure. Uh, let's see if I can get it all working. State, oh, I do need a uh, dock and mount as well. And then everything else I can stub in as I go. Dock, design, nope, desk slash design this design is a work in progress up. This is not what I want to see right now. Uh, right, so the doc starts out with nothing more than the title and the intro and that is definitely going to be good. Mount desk mount doc def once blah 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 Okay, I think, I think if I run this now, if I um, cider jack in CLJS, I think that it should actually compile and uh, boot me into a, ver a view of the document and app in my browser and then have hot code reloading. And then I should be good to go. Uh, REPL type fig wheel main dev please let's see now the moment of truth will it compile or will there be errors compile warning boop boop boo a lot of warnings <laughs> okay that's not great but not a big deal Opening the browser, successfully compiled. Now will it display a document? Kinda. <laughs> and we're in, okay, so not perfect, but actually not that bad. So let me close that window. Let's kind of peek through these uh, warnings here and see what's up. 
no such namespace f. Hmm, that's a little weird. Oh, I see. I see what's going on here. Let's open up dev slash baton namespace. Ah, yes, 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 yes. Not my favorite thing to do, but I can just pull in a depth here. Oh, that's not what I wanted. Right here, I can just add um, should be fine. That's fine, but I still need the dependency here, which looks like, I always forget how it looks. It's this local root thing. That should work. Uh, since I'm in dev, I don't need to go out to Oh, I actually don't even need to go out like this at all. Let's see if that solves that problem. What did I do? Oh, I see what I did here. I actually just need to do this. Intro component should theoretically make this render in a more nice way. Label. Really? Ugh. I don't love it. Um, This all needs to be fixed. It definitely doesn't work, so I need to not worry too much about it right now. Let's refresh this. Okay, there we go. We're, we're getting somewhere now. See that things are oop, still not working yet. Oop, 
Come on. Ugh. Jeez. Just remove those bits of code entirely, actually. Uh, maybe that's smart, maybe it's not. Just get rid of that one entirely. All right. Okay, we're in a workable state right now. Uh, not perfect, but acceptable. Right, so. Let me change this up just a bit. Title, I'm going to make simpler. I'm just going to do this H1 desk design dot intro is just in a paragraph. a work in progress. Markdown is a useful function, but I'm going to leave it in a section up here called bits. This is uh, a spot to put functions that I, that I uh, made as I was writing this document. They may be useful enough to uh, bring into um, a library, but I can uh, separate those things out later. Yeah, sure, that, that makes reasonable sense. Begin source, closure, tangle, dot slash source, desk, design, dot CLJS beautiful and here I just cut that and put it in the markdown or put it up here and I'll put a little note here saying this might be worth putting in the stylo lib oh oh yeah Beautiful. Okay. So the dock itself now is, I can split it up a little bit like this assembly. And here I can do um, intro. There we go. That is now the everything pretty much set up for a design workflow that I can be happy with. So the 
design. Reuse the top from my current desk. Uh, I will basically be building a metal frame with uh, tubes and rods with uh, straight tubes and bent rod. to which I can attach the tabletop. The design could work just as well with a new, nicer piece of wood instead of the existing top, but this is cheap and available. <laughs> Uh, the aesthetics should be minimal. The um, desk should have a small uh, cubby space underneath the work surface where I can put wires uh, mount um, monitor and mic arms uh, and hide computers. <laughs> Fairly thin, yet sturdy. Um, rubber uh, feet should be used to avoid sliding and scratching. Yeah, I think that's good enough. So, uh, Work surface, closure, there we go, tangle, source, okay, so, um, Oh yeah, I should have a little note here. Um, the design should be parametric uh, with regards to surface width, surface height, width, surface height, um, No, sorry, surface width, surface depth, um, surface height, right? Um, and cubby um, gap. As well, a uh, user should be, be able to specify, um, specify surface thickness, uh, cubby um, material thickness. Uh, and probably um, middle rod diameter. 
diameter. Maybe not that. I don't know. Oops. Oh yeah, that makes sense. Okay, so define uh, Okay, so the work surface will be a function of a width, a depth, and a thickness. Yeah, very simple. And it's, uh, it's just going to be f slash Let's um, save this. There we go. Oh, yeah, now I can actually eval this. There we go. Okay, so. I'm running a little short on time. Probably going to go another 20 minutes. Looks like about all I have time to do. Yeah. Uh, F slash. Uh, I forget <laughs> a little bit um, if I have a box element or not. Appears like I don't. Hmm. I have an F rep box. Huh. Just do it with the polygon then to start. It's not a big deal, really. Okay, so um, let's define the work surface to be the thread last result of this polygon. The set of points runs through f slash polygon which then runs through f slash extrude with a height of thickness and then well let's that let's say that's it for now that should result in a working shape so let's get the points here so it's going to be start at 000, zero. Uh, let's go width wise 00, zero. And then uh, width depth zero, 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 width, width depth zero, depth zero. Run that through a polygon, run that through an extrude. That is the work surface. And then let's build a dock here. Actually, let me. Um, Well, let's let's start really simple. This will be I do have SVG in here, right? Good. SVG slash um, render. Oh, sorry, shape. Yeah. Shape slash render curves is what I'll use here to get the wireframe.
takes a shape, takes a transform, and takes a color. I have to fix this function to be better than what it is. The transform that I want is Symmetric transform is what I need. And the color I'll do slate gray for now. Okay, that's the object. That should give me a group element. So what I can do here is SVG slash figure uh, 500, 500 scale uh, 20. And we'll do figure one, um, desk work surface. Object. Okay, I don't know if this is gonna work because I can't totally remember how I tend to set this up. I always have to refresh my memory, but that should be fine. Okay, uh, let's see. Wrong number of arguments, pass to render curves. Oh yeah, I haven't passed. Right, I need to do work surface. Okay, something went wrong. Hmm. Oops. No, that shouldn't matter. Drawing 2D maybe? S.substring is not a function. It's a function here. Uh, right, let's make it actually a real thing here. Uh, 200, no, let's do uh, 70, 30, and 1. Let's try to build that now. Collections must be the same size. Uh, yes, the classic problem with my hacking, hacky approach. Um, Hmm. 
still no dice. Oh, not what I meant. go kinda it's an object now okay let's save this see if we can get something to show up here can we get something working again can we get just text Huh, I really messed something up now. Let's inspect this, have a look here. Wrong thing, console. This substring thing is a little bonkers here. I shouldn't need it, I don't. Oh, okay, this might be intro component here. I don't need to mark it down anymore. Ah, this might be what I was uh, having trouble with here. Intro component, let's just make it like this. Okay, that's something. It's not perfect, but okay. There we go, okay, we got something. Uh, looks weird, but start. We could start with that. Weird is better than broken, kind of. OK, um, design, work surface, the work surface component. Let's try uh, scaling this down. Okay, that kind of works. Um, Let's go with drawing 2D for the time being. Let's scale it to 20 again. Let's see what that looks like. Is this working? It doesn't look like the extrude is working for me. So let's have a peek at that. SV, no, F slash extrude, shape, and then the height. Let's see. So polygon is the shape extrude by the thickness. It should should work. Something's not happening correctly here. Okay, let's try to run this here. If I do work surface 10, 10, 10. Oh, is it this? Maybe this does need... Uh...
Hmm. Collections must be the same size. Okay, so I do need to pass 2D. There we go. Why then, I must inquire, does this not work? This should be a square. Well, it's uh, not quite working the way I thought. Let's see. Hmm. Curious. Okay, well, let's just run things in the REPL then. Right? No reason not to try that. Let's extrude polygon. Zero, zero, ten, zero, ten, ten, zero, ten. Yeah, okay, something's not right here. I thought this would work. Uh, I have to figure out what I'm forgetting about my own code. Uh, not a tragic problem, I'm sure I can figure it out, but. Okay. Um, I have to get going, so as a starting point, this is a reasonably good time to stop. Uh, I've got, I did a, quite a few different things today, got good work done on uh, the new version of this design. I've got, oh that, yeah, that's relevant to me. I have the start of a desk design doc, which I'm going to continue tomorrow, and I figured out how to get uh, SVG paths from pictures of shapes, um, I call that a pretty big win. So that's going to be it for me today. Uh, anyone who's watching this at all, I uh, hope you're having a good time. Uh, if you're, you know, on holiday or something like that, and you can't see other people, hang in there. Uh, it's good to be socially safe and all that stuff. Um, thanks for tuning in, and. Uh, I'll be around again tomorrow. Have a good one. That's going to be it from me for the day.